Hello, I'm Matthew Wright at the Institute of Sound and Vibration Research at the University of Southampton. This video is about Comsol Multiphysics and it's for acoustical engineering students and it explains how to use it for analysing acoustical problems. I'm going to start off by opening up the package, so I'm going to go to the Start menu. Now, if you are using one of the university's computer rooms, you'll find it in the numerical modelling folder, but because this is my own desktop computer, it's got its own folder, and you can see I've got several versions of console multiphysics installed here. I'm going to open 5.2a, but everything I've got to say should apply to any other version beginning with 5. It takes a little while to start up because it's quite a big package. When it does, you have these two buttons here, you either to uh, go to help you through the process of building a model or just open a blank model that you can then populate with your own details. I'm not actually going to do either of those. Instead, I'm going to go to the file menu and open the application library. This is a library full of pre-built example models and it's a really good way to learn the package. So I'm going to open up the top set under console multiphysics and then I'm going to open up the acoustics models and there's two here. There's plenty more specialised ones down in the node for the acoustics module. But I'm going to click on the one called Eigen Modes of Room. When I do that, it opens up this a uh, bit of information about it. I can also click down here and open a PDF document. And this has lots of information. It's very useful. It's got an introduction to the model, some more technical information about how it's defined, what results you expect, and some notes about how it's implemented in console, and then a detailed set of step-by-step -step instructions to build this model from scratch. That's a really good way to get familiar with console. Pick one of these models, build it and run it. But for now, I'm just going to open the model like this. And you'll see we've got quite a lot of detail on this screen. We've got a big ribbon across the top, various menus, and then three main windows. The model builder, that contains all the information about the structure of the model, what we want to study, and what results we want to see at the end of it. And that's in a tree structure. So I can open up individual nodes. At the moment we've got component one, study one, and results. Any item in this tree that has a number in it, like component one or study one, I could have another node the same, which would be component two. So I can have multiple components and I can have multiple studies. But for now, we'll just have one of each. If I open up this tree, I can see that inside the component node, there's some definitions. There's the geometry, the materials, the physics, in our case, pressure acoustics, and the mesh, and so forth. If I pick any of these, then the middle window, the settings window, will change accordingly. So I enter information by picking one of these nodes and then making the settings in the middle node. Over on the right, we've got the graphics node, which shows me details about what's going on. We've also got this messages window down the bottom. So far, the only message is to say that I've opened the file. So I'm going to close that up for now. Along the top here, if we open up the entire tree, there's a great deal of information here, and we're not going to go through it step by step. So for now, I'll just close it up. But something I want to point out is that the structure of this tree going down is very similar to these menu tabs going across. So to build this tree from top to bottom, you go left to right across these menus. And in the Home tab, we've actually also got a set of buttons that correspond more or less going left to right to the structure top to bottom. Now, since the definitions, the component and the study have already been 
set up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to click on this one to build the mesh and that shows us that what was our geometry, that room, has now been broken up into a set of elements called a mesh. It's not very easy to see what's going on, so in the graphics window I'm going to hide some of these edges and to do that I need to use, there's lots of these icons across the top. I'm not going to go through them all but this one is a very useful one here, click and hide, except at the moment you can see when I hover over the geometry it selects the whole thing, that's because this button is set to select domains. Let's select boundaries instead and now you can see that when I hover I just get this surface so if I click on those it's going to hide them and now I can see the rest of the geometry and if I switch off clicking and hiding I can start looking around inside. The left button allows me to rotate the geometry the right button means I can translate it from side to side and the middle button means I can zoom in and out. If I get into a state where it's hard to get it back how I wanted, this takes me to a default view and this zooms it out as far as it goes, but that's already there in the default view. So having built the mesh, I'm now going to press this button which says Compute and you'll see I get this progress tab down the bottom. It says it's got 18,156 degrees of freedom, but in nine seconds it solved it. And there's some results, and we can see our results over here under the results node. And we've got some data and other things, but the main thing here are these three nodes here. One for the acoustic, displaying the acoustic pressure, one displaying the sound pressure, and one displaying the acoustic pressure as ISO surfaces. We'll see what that is in a minute. But if I open up this node, you can see it's got one sub node, the surface. If I go back to what we call the parent node, you can see that in the settings window, there's this pull down menu. These are all the different eigenfrequencies that it found. So if I pick another one, like this one around 90 Hertz and click plot, you'll see that's a different pressure mode and you can see that looks like that's a trapped wave behind the sofa. If I switch to this one it gives me pressure levels in decibels. Now that's rather arbitrary because eigenfunctions can arbitrarily be scaled up and down but it's still good to know the relative level. So on these nodal lines we'd expect very low pressure but look we seem to get this lumpy surface there. That was because the mesh wasn't actually that fine. The finer the mesh, the more accurate your results, but the longer it takes to run. So this is a rather crude approximation and that shows up when we try and plot something like that. It's always good to be aware of that. And if I click on the third plot group, here we can see this is showing ISO surfaces like contours in space. Plus it's also showing a colour map on the remaining surfaces. And if I open up this node, you'll see there's two things in this plot group. And so that's how you have multiple things displayed. OK, that's enough for now. In the next video, we'll go into a bit more detail about it.